On Asia Down Under today, business executives turn boxers for a cause. Wellington's all-girl hip-hop group dances to the big times. And a serving of flair and flavour from Saki Bar 601. Hi and welcome to Asia Down Under. We may be well into winter now, but before autumn passed, I caught up with a scientist in Canterbury who, through his enthusiastic research, is helping promote the mushroom industry in New Zealand. Good dog. Seek, Peggy. Where is it, Peggy? Seek, Peggy. Where is it, Peggy? Seek. Where is it? Good dog. Where is it, Peggy? Sniffing Seek. her way to buried treasure, Peggy leads Gareth Renaudin and Professor Yun Wong to mushrooms. Yeah, very... But not just any ordinary mushrooms. Every night. Here, hidden in Canterbury, away. are farms of precious truffles. The peculiar fungus worth more than their weight in gold. And, it's, uh, it's just absolutely unbelievable. Something yeah. that looks like a stone. <laughs> that, you know, it hardly looks edible. Yeah. Um, that is worth so much money. Yeah. This here is yeah. worth $3,000 yeah. a kilo. Yeah, in New Zealand. Uh, but in That's the, incredible. Yeah, incredible. Good girl. And they cost the earth for a reason. Garrett, a trophier owner, knows the level of patience this rare delicacy demands. Good dog. Good girl. That's a very good beagle, aren't you? She's a very good well, we had to wait nine years before we produced our first truffle. And uh, that was quite a long wait. <laughs> yeah, it's like growing anything, really. It's you know you have to um, you have to have patience. You have to be diligent. So you have to to try and grow it, uh, try and try and uh, follow the rules to grow. And sometimes we don't even know what the rules are. So that's again where someone like Wong comes in very helpful is is talking to us about as growers the things that we should be doing to give ourselves a better chance of getting more truffle. Professor Wong is an expert in mycology, or the study of fungus, and specialises in edible mushrooms. That expertise brought him to New Zealand 20 years ago. That time, the government, the New Zealand government, decided that uh, the New Zealand agricultural practice has to be uh, diversified. Truffles are mostly native to Europe and China and grow only on the roots of host trees like hazelnut, oak and pine. But Wong's research doesn't just end with truffles. He's helped set up over 50 plantations in New Zealand that grow different kinds of rare edible mushrooms. Pine timber is one of New Zealand's largest industries, but what these plantations could also support is something of equal potential, a secondary industry of saffron milkcap mushrooms. Oh, lovely. The, the gap between the gills is uh, very steep. And uh, we're trying to, <laughs> we're all trying to work very hard, trying to introduce new species and uh, improve our technology, making sure the price of our trees is accessible to the farmers. Yeah, that's right. Wong's enthusiasm for mycology is infectious and cherished by research partner Alexei Goran. Wong is the type of person, as a scientist, you only met once in your life. So it's been um, just a great chance for me and a big honor to uh, just get to work with him on a day-to-day -day basis. These mushrooms are the result of a three-year wait. Because such mushrooms are completely dependent on their host trees for nutrition, the relationship between the two can be rather delicate and comes with its share of uncertainty and disappointment. You're frustrated all the time. You're trying to grow the culture, it won't grow. Oh, no. What happened? It won't grow. Uh, when you find out that they grow it, they're trying to put in the trees. The trees don't, doesn't like it. No, well, I don't like your fungus. I don't, I don't work with the fungus. Yeah, you can see this. In the lab, Wong works relentlessly on promoting the fifth largest food crop in the world. Fungus spores are first introduced into the roots of saplings and over time make them capable of sprouting the exotic mushrooms. It's really a constant trial and error, but when the results appear... For Wong, that joy extends beyond the lab. He's also a keen chef, and his favourite is another special mushroom he's helped promote in New Zealand, porcini. These rare mushrooms have been delicacies in China and France for centuries, and the team of Wong and Alexei struck a curious balance between East and West. 
the, the French eat almost everything and the Chinese eat everything. So it's just it's very similar, uh, the cultures. Uh, the reason I brush them because we don't wash them with the water. The, okay. It's not, it's a bad idea to use the water to wash them. There's a lot of soaking of the water then yeah. reduce the flavor and aroma. Cooking these rare mushrooms is best kept simple, barbecued or gently sauteed to retain their nutty, aromatic flavors. While feasting on the results of their hard work provides a small reward, the real prize for Wong lies in the job itself. Nowadays we are isolate ourselves from nature. You, our job always have to touch the niche, talk to the niche. If you don't talk to them, they won't work with you. So this is so enjoyable. You work in your enjoyment. What else do they want? <laughs> well, a few more exotic mushrooms and truffles would be good, but until then, mushroom growers like Gareth can count on Professor Wong and Alexi's hard work to develop this burgeoning industry. So the research and search continue.